Hello everyone. Welcome to the Sensible Bigfoot Project. I'm your host, Randy Harrington. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and let's enjoy the show. Okay everyone, this video is going to be a follow-up to the video that I just dropped about the 1969 Bossberg tracks and a biologist look at the tracks as possible human uh, characteristics because of the deformities and uh, therefore questioning the mid-tarsal break theory uh, by Meldrum. So uh, this is going to be a different point of view. This is going to in involve Dr. Meldrum himself and uh, this is going to show in the moment him looking at some prints from the 400, the location that Shane and I have been working at for whew, half a decade now, seven years even, Shane even longer than that. But uh, these were footprints that were presented to Dr. Meldrum uh, at a conference in Honubi, Oklahoma. And I am going to show the video of this happening in the moment and him verifying that these tracks presented to him are indeed uh, Bigfoot tracks. And they came from the 400, the location that if you watch any of our videos, any of our past videos that involve the 400, there is a lot of stuff going on on this property. And we've got young juvenile tracks. And that's where I'm going to lead in this video. Uh, so first we want to verify that indeed there are adult Bigfoots on the 400 property, as verified by Dr. Meldrum here, authenticating uh, two tracks that we have from the 400. Also have a handprint from the 400 that he is going to be looking at. So you can see as, as he examines these castings, uh, he receives a copy of these castings for his collection once he verified that these indeed were from uh, Bigfoots. And so now he has these in his collection and had a correspondence with Shane because of this. And so I want you to watch the video. And then after the video, I've got some important points that I'd like to talk to you about. We're a month apart and about a mile apart. Uh -huh. This was the first one that was taken. Yep. And it was about... Um, it was about a 30% uphill slope. Wow. This one was actually in our ash pile. Ash pile. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it came through. You can see where it stepped. You know where it went through and where it stepped. This is the only possible place it could have left. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still right in our ash pile. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's I, I don't see any red flags. Well, the thing is, too, you know, when you're looking at the angles of toes, you, you, you know, again, we have, we have this tendency, it's like we're hanging a picture on the wall, and we think that this is the way the foot is oriented. But in reality, you know, you look at that heel, and the midpoint of that heel is right there. And so, you know, the long axis, it's going to be sitting more like that. And the reason it's bulging out here so far, and it's so flat, see, is that the foot is, is not severe, but it's, 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 it's extreme pronation, which makes it bulge a little on this side, a little curved on the outside. And, and you can see that, I mean, in the depth. If, if, this, is, if this is really the horizontal, it's, I got, I'll show you it's the thicker, thicker here. Oh, than this one's here. Yeah. Okay. So there's definitely more weight on that side. And right. right. when you roll a foot in like that, what yeah. happens? The toe set tends to flare off in that direction. So that's very natural. So it's less pronounced here. And I see this is straight up. You can't kind of see where, oh, that's the original one. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. I'm just curious, but I'm just pretty much. I still talk about it. It might be a little bit. I'm like putting that play in the suit. There's hair. There's hair in this one. Hair? Yeah. I was going to try to see if I could see any um, ridges here. <laughs> Right there. Those, those lines right there. That's just real slight. There, there you can see some. See those skin ridges. Oh yeah. 
I hadn't even looked at that close. It, uh, oh, is that one right there? Yeah. Looks like there's a few little lines yeah. going yeah. on there. Yeah, there could be. And you have your light that way. That way. Well, it, it'd probably most likely be curving across for the most part. Um, See, so, you know, we have we have these details, the loops and whirls and arches in our fingertips. Yeah. But with the way toes are, well, see, less so with with the Sasquatch probably because our toes tend to go like this. Yeah. And so the, the the ridge or the core pattern it's called is further back on the stem, and it doesn't touch down on the toe tip and pads. Um, and so oftentimes you don't see them; they're back here obscured somewhere unless. Unless the pattern is quite extensive and, and, and you can see a lot, but it's very like leafy substance. Well, it's hard to tell, yeah, whether that's just you know the pattern of rib, rigid leaves. That one's taken where because that would be deeper. Uh, than what what happened was there's like some torrential yeah. rains and yeah. it washed the leaf litter away and right. the step in that bare spot. This one was actually, this was part of a trackway. There was uh, three, three, or three or four other tracks that... But they were in leaf litter. This was the best one. So you see, and, and you, can, you can see how this has just a slight raise right, right here. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't go clear up. See, the human would have this very distinctive ball like this, and then it would kind of button hook back here to make the arch. Yeah. Uh, but in this case, you know, you can see how the, the edge of the foot See how much straighter that is, whereas this is, if you, again, if we use this as the midpoint versus this midpoint, then this is curved right right here. It's rolled in much more. This one is, is flat, but I mean, it has a slight bit of supination. And the toes don't show or display outward quite as far. Uh, those, I, those are absolutely, I'm, I don't see any reason why. Those are every bit as convincing as any, any other tracks I've ever seen. Well, I started amazing. listening to you yesterday. I'm looking. Is that the mid tarsal? I kind of. Well, high, well, this is actually lower areas. We're yeah, at. yeah. This this one is uh, it isn't showing a mid tarsal break so much. I mean, when they would walk, and I say it doesn't show it, yeah. because when they walk, I mean, the foot still does that. Yeah. But the question is, is the substrate compliant enough, and is there enough forward impulse? That, that it causes the pressure here to make this dirt underneath it yield and push back. So this one has it doesn't. It, um, it, it a little more than the other one. Yeah, so there's a little bit of it there, and you notice it's kind of slightly angled this way, across yeah. there like that. So it's, 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 it's in the right, it's in the right place. That's right where it would be if it exists. It's present. So what do you got there? Uh, oh, these, 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 these are for oh, you. Oh, okay. These are, I didn't know if you wanted to provide that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's do some of the transfer. I actually transferred some of the items. Oh, thank you. Well, I'd be happy to do that. If you want them or not. Oh, I definitely, definitely do. Yeah. Oh. Here I started, and, and I need to, yeah, I need your contact information and everything. Yeah, so. yeah, sure. This is a handprint we got. Oh, interesting. Um, the picture's way better. This was in real soft substrate. Uh huh. Um, I tried to pour it thick because I was worried that it oh. would run through it. Right. It was, uh, yeah. it was like ground up pine needles yes. and whatnot. And it's tough because that goes down through. And, and I'll tell you how we got this. Okay, so um, we have countless videos of tracks. We find tracks around them and whatnot. And, uh, so anyway, there's this, there's this clip, a small clip over here. It's about this much space. Uh -huh. And we're finding, we're finding nine and a half inch tracks going up to it, right? right. Little holes that are being dug to stick still in them. And, I'm, and I'm, when I say holes, I mean holes like this big around, maybe this is deep. But the sticks will be left in them, right? Um, so up underneath this, two big flat rocks, or maybe this thing, one's about this big around. But every time we go there, there's a new rotted wood and bark just sitting up on top of this. So it looks okay, maybe we'll salt it. They had set it up in there. Now it's left in there. So the picture shows it much better. It's, it's, uh, it just didn't come out as well. Then the finger actually, this finger actually stopped right here. I was over a little bit. Uh -huh. So it's uh, this one is correct. That one stops there. And I was, I thought myself the fingers were too short for the palm. 
Well, their fingers, I, I mean, my experience has been that their fingers are relatively short. Oh, are they? Yeah, and I mean, that the palm uh, tends to be webbed up a little bit higher. It, it seems to, oops, sorry, they're showing that very fish. It seems to lack, see, it lacks this venar uh, eminence, the muscles here that we use in opposition, and see how it looks like the pad of the, of the thumb is facing the same direction as the pads of the finger. So even though it's divergent like that, it's not rotating. Oh, okay. and, and so that's that's consistent with other examples that we have. And, and that is correlated, that lack of uh, rotation for opposition is correlated with the lack of differential development of the of the muscles here, the opponents and flexor that we use to bring the thumb across the palm like this. In fact, in humans, when the, the, the median nerve that comes down here through the carpal tunnel has a little branch that comes back and innervates these muscles, and uh, sometimes in carpal tunnel or an abrasive injury, you damage that little nerve, that recurrent nerve, or damage or compress the median nerve, these muscles atrophy, they get shrink up, and that condition is called eight hand. Oh, oh. Eight hand because the apes mm -hmm. have, don't have that drumstick look to their so hand, and so they've called it eight hand. And that's exactly what we see is eight hand. In, I mean, it's just because there's a lack of development of those muscles, so when it's pressed down, there's not a, a bulge here. And, and for that matter, over here, I mean, the thing that gives our palm such a cut is this musculature and this musculature, which you know we can we can so you can see when. This is another human characteristic. When you make a fist, notice how the fourth and fifth go down wider. So this this um, bone here articulates back here in such a way that we can flex it somewhat. You can't do that with this one. And, this one. and that's so that we can bring these digits over. So when we grab something, especially if it's spherical, it, it converges. All these fingertips converge together to one point. So the little finger crosses over the palm instead of going straight down across the palm. Yeah. So their hand doesn't seem to have that. They, they have, you know, and so you, you hear witnesses describe like when they pick up a stone, they don't pick it up like this. They pick it up like this. But they're, with their fingers running parallel, they're just wrapping around like that. So, you know, there's not enough observational data or uh, description and use to. It was kind of interesting when MK was showing that. Yeah, Patty was showing that little short thumb. Um, but, and those, and the, well, he said the fingers were long. I think it's hard to judge on those two frames alone. You look at some of the other frames, and, and we've got about a half dozen casts. And if you look at my book, there's a section of hand prints and other prints, other body prints besides other body part prints. Which <laughs> was that? Um, my second foot on the side. Yeah, I've got that. You should really get that. Uh, you can get that on Amazon or at Barnes and Noble. Most of these are There's a whole chapter on that, and it, and it shows some tracings and uh, photographs of casts of handprints. It, it'll illustrate some of these same characteristics. I mean, I've got one that looks almost identical to that. So, when you look at it, it reminds me of a baseball ball, minus the webbing across the first and second digit. But it, it just, you know, it's just this big. Yeah. Big digits. Um, I'll have to. I'll have to send you a picture of this because the comparison is really. You know, chimp has the same study. You know, it's funny to watch a pit chimp pick up. If this were, if a chimp were to pick this up, because they're, they're lateral digits, they have the opposite problem. They have really long digits and a short thumb. So they'll pick something up like that, or you'll see that they'll even pick it up like that, like that. So. You know, I mean that those digits still can apprehend, and so a doorknob is. You, you don't have to have a bulge. Yeah, you can just grab. It. I mean, look at a spider monkey. It doesn't have a thumb. They, their, their, their thumb there's, is just a little more of a bone left, and uh, their hand is kind of evolved in their little bone. And so when they when they just grab on, but they still can pick things up. And, you know, they manipulate. And, and they'll do that a lot of times. They'll pick things up like that. Well, I say I really appreciate it. So, do you have a card or something? Uh, I don't have a card. I mean, I can leave the info in the back. Okay, yeah, yeah. 
So we have uh, Dr. Meldrum verifying that the tracks are authentic with dermal ridges and all of the characteristics that he would deem reliable to him to identify these as Bigfoot prints. And they are from the 400. So also we are going to show you the handprint that he looked at. And we're also going to show you smaller a smaller handprint. And there are smaller tracks on this property. Now, Shane and him had a correspondence and would, would talk back and forth in emails until Shane started showing him pictures of the juvenile prints. And then it went silent. Uh, now, I understand from, a, from his professional point of view that more than likely he doesn't want to comment on juvenile tracks because they look so human. And, and because they look so human, he can't 100% guarantee that he's not being hoaxed by someone because he's not actually there and saw the tracks not, or actually saw the tracks being laid. So, so he, he's, he's reluctant to sign off on any prints that look human, even if they are juvenile Bigfoot prints. So I met Dr. Meldrum back in 2009, and uh, we tried to show him some pictures that we had from some game cams and stuff, and tried hard to get him to commit to them. And, and, and we wanted him to say, oh yeah, that's, that's a nice picture of a Bigfoot, but he never would. He was always saying things like, ooh, that's interesting. Wow, yeah, that's, that, that's interesting. That's, uh, so, that's something. But he never would commit to it. And I even mentioned to my, to the, my partner at the time that it was perf because of professional reasons that he couldn't say anything more than that because most people look for validation from someone like him. That's why he's probably seen thousands of footprints that people send him. They want desperately for him to be to validate what you know what they've got. I mean, we we did the same thing. That, that's why we showed him those prints and the handprint. We were looking for validation because when we want to tell you that there's something going on at the 400, it's nice to have Dr. Meldrum say, "Well, if these prints came from the 400, there are Bigfoots there." So this does bolster what we've been saying all along that goes on at the 400. The fact that he went silent in the emails about the juvenile prints, I don't hold that against him. I, I think it, 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 it's professionalism, and, and he's smart not to because there's going to be a lot of people who would send lots of human footprints to him looking for validation because they are confused about what they're finding. It, it's just, it just makes sense. So let's just try to be sensible about it. Needless to say, I'm going to show you the pictures of the small handprints, the big handprints, where they were found, and the footprints, and just know that these are all coming from the same property. So when you go back to all of our videos and you start looking at some of these foot tracks and the trackways, they're valid people. There, there are juvenile tracks on this property showing up, and they look very human. 